I wonder if you and Robert have discussed your plan for the year end, Alexandra. You are married into a family of which members are famous investors for generations. So you'd better get your act together. If you don't arrange your schedule early, you'll have a hard time later. I know. Robert seems to be very busy at work. I can't make a definite appointment since it depends on his workload. We're thinking to come and greet you on the New Year's Day. New Year's Day? Stop kidding me! What? Why? You need to help me with the cooking and cleaning too. You're my son's wife, aren't you? Cleaning and cooking? We are preparing a little bit at our place, so we don't plan on doing anything extravagant for New Year's Eve. We don't have kids, so it won't be time-consuming. I might go wash the car, though. What are you talking about? I know your house is a mess. I'm talking about cleaning up my house, not your house. Sorry about that. What are you going to do then? I told you to come over here and clean up. You should have understood that. I wonder if you are really aware of your responsibility as my son's wife. Robert is working, so I don't think I should go alone. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can help you to clean up your house. What did you say? Robert can come over later. First of all, it's common sense for you to come home early to do the cleaning and make the festivities. Can't you even understand that? Huh? Is that common sense? I've never heard about such thing before. In a wealthy family like ours, that's the norm everywhere. You'd better remember that. As my son's wife, it's your duty. Our cooking class will be closed from late December. So why don't you come here on December 28th? That's impossible. You're supposed to come. It's your duty as my son's wife. Why don't you obey me? I'll have to teach you how to clean, cook, and so on properly. But if I go there, I can't cook for Robert, right? That's impossible. I'm his wife, so I can't just leave him alone. Besides, it takes two hours to get to your house, so I can't even make a day trip. You can do that if you just get up early in the morning and get ready. You're just not good at time management. It's impossible. Anyway, just come. I've got shopping to do. I'll be in trouble. I'll send you a list now so you can get it when you come. You can at least do that for me, right? Crab, sirloin beef, and so on. All of them are expensive things. I can't afford it. Will you pay for that? We really can't afford it. Are you kidding me? I'm the teacher. You need to pay for the materials as a student. Real good stuff doesn't come cheap. That may be true, but... I have a life here too. Don't talk nonsense. Just do as you are told to. I'll talk to Robert about this. I ended the message with my mother-in-law and told Robert about it when he came home that night. Robert looked a little peeved and said he'll let his mother know that we won't pay a visit to her in late December. Alexandra, what did you say to Robert? He called me out of the blue this morning and told me to stop bullying you. You said something nasty to him, didn't you? I just told him what I said to you yesterday. I didn't lie. 
I only talked to Robert about it because I didn't want to cause you any inconvenience. What are you talking about? You're such a useless woman. It's your duty to make things work out, isn't it? You really don't know anything about common sense. You may be young, but you lack knowledge. That's quite a rude thing to say, Umbriel. It's the first time anyone ever said that to me. If you don't discipline yourself now, you could be in big trouble. Please don't bring disgrace to our family name. You know that our family has been famous for generations, right? I didn't do anything that will dishonor the family. You didn't do your duty. Our ancestors became great warriors because they did their duty properly. So you must learn from them. Is that clear? I understand. As Robert's wife, I will do my best. That's not what I mean. You need to realize what your duty as my son's wife is. I'll consult with Robert and try to make it work. Oh, do you have any plan for the New Year's Eve? It can't be helped. You don't have to visit me this year. You'll have to think about it by next year. Yes, ma'am. That's how I avoided the preparations at my parents-in-law's house for New Year's Eve celebration. I spent the New Year's Eve with my husband and visited my in-laws at the beginning of the New Year. We had lunch together to celebrate the New Year. And just when I thought I was enjoying a peaceful life for a while, within a week after that, I received a message from my mother-in-law again. Alexandra, do you have a knowledge about how to apply for final tax returns? Final tax returns? I don't know much about it, but I think I know as much as anyone else. Oh, well, I guess that means you can do it. What do you mean by that? I only know as much as anyone else. That means you know how to do it, right? Well, yes. I want you to do my final tax return. My husband did it until last year, but from this year, I have to do it. The problem is... I don't really understand it. That's why I need you to do it. You're currently living on your husband's pension, right? Yes. What's with that? In that case, it should be tax-free. Tax-free? It means you don't have to file a final tax return for that. Oh, really? But if you have other income, you need to pay tax. You are teaching your own cooking classes, right? You need to apply for final tax return in that case. Is that so? I'm stumped. I don't know what to do. I really don't know. If the income from your class is less than $2,000 a year, I think you don't have to do it. But in your case, it must be over $2,000 a year since you have many students. Don't worry. It's just a hobby. I don't earn that much. In that case, I don't have to file a final tax return, right? I think so. But I'm not an expert in such things, so I think it's better to ask a professional. I think you should go to a consultation at the tax office. It's free anyway. Yes, I'll think about it. There was nothing wrong with the messages we exchanged. But most of the messages I received from Umbriel were quite rude. She always tries to force me to do whatever she wants. To be honest, both my husband and I were getting fed up with her behavior. Still, nothing was that bad so we were still able to put up with it. But then, 
we received another message from my mother-in-law that astonished us. Alexandra, I'm sorry to bother you so suddenly, but I'd like to ask you something. How can I help you? This is just a hypothetical question. If I give you some money, will you break up with Robert? Huh? I said it's a hypothetical question. You can use your imagination to answer that. What do you think? Do you know what you're talking about? Are you asking me to sell Robert for money? Even if it were hypothetical, it's impossible. I told you to just use your imagination. I can't imagine myself doing that. You're so inconsiderate. It's just some sort of joke. It's not an unusual thing. But I think it's quite a vulgar thing to say. Even though you are my mother-in-law, it's still unforgivable. To tell you the truth, there's a woman I know who comes from a prominent family like ours. The daughter of that family seems to have fallen in love with Robert. She's a wonderful daughter. That's hypothetical, right? Seems that Robert also likes her. He's quite serious about this matter. So I'm going to pay you and ask you to divorce Robert. Tell me what you think. I told you that even if it were hypothetical, I can't imagine such a thing. We are living in a modern world. Well, it won't be hypothetical in the near future, so just be prepared for that. Please don't do that. I really hate that kind of thing. After the somewhat creepy and uncomfortable exchange of messages was over, this time, Robert called me to tell me that he had been summoned to his parents' house for an emergency and that he had no choice but to go there. I have a bad feeling about this. Robert told me that he would be late and that I could go to bed first. But I couldn't go to sleep, so I decided to stay up and wait for him. When Robert came home before midnight, he was a little surprised to see me up and waiting for him. He didn't say much and was acting a little strange. He said he was tired and was about to go to bed, but I forced him to tell me what happened at his parents' house. He was a little hesitant, but he told me about what happened. The next day, I contacted my mother-in-law. Hello, Umbriel. Can you please explain everything to me? Oh, Alexandra, what's wrong? Robert told me about what you said to him. So the story about the wealthy woman was only half true. You were lying, weren't you? I didn't expect you to believe me. It's all going to come true anyway. What do you mean by that? Besides, why are you taking the liberty of saying that I'm supposed to be happy to get the money out of your pocket and break up with Robert? I never said anything like that. Please stop making things up on your own. That's why I said it would happen in the end. Because you didn't listen to me properly. Of course, Robert would rather have a daughter from a wealthy family than someone like you. The fact that you listen to me so patiently is the best proof of that. I'll give you the money and I want you to leave my son. I have received an offer from the daughter of a wealthy family. If I don't do something, my family name will be dishonored. I couldn't believe it when I heard you told Robert that I had agreed to leave him. If someone told you about that all of a sudden, of course you'll be surprised, won't you? That's how you lied to us and tried to separate us from each other, right? What a cruel thing to do. 
I don't think so. I'm going to pay you anyway. Robert will get married to the woman from a wealthy family, so all of us will end up living a happy life. You'll be a little rich too, since you'll receive the money from me. Robert and I have no intention of leaving each other. If you don't listen to me, I'll think about another plan to make my wishes come true. That night, I showed Robert all the messages with my mother-in-law when he came home. Then we talked about our future plans. We all agreed that things are going to get worse if we don't do something about it. We were worried about the situation alone, so we told my parents about the situation and asked for their help. When we had a plan in place, I contacted my mother-in-law again. Umbriel, may I talk to you now? Alexandra, what's going on? Actually, about the other day... Oh, you mean about your divorce from Robert? Yes, about that. I've made up my mind, so I thought I'd let you know. Finally! Go ahead then. I'm divorcing Robert. I see. Well, you've made up your mind. I'm glad to hear that. I think it's the smartest thing to do. After all, family status is something to be cherished. That's where you and Robert didn't get along. I'm really sorry to hear that. May I continue? Of course. Anyway, I'll make sure to pay you the money, so don't worry. Does that mean you will pay for my divorce from Robert? Well, that's the way it's going to turn out. What's wrong with that? Well, that's a relief. Also, I'll be over there this weekend, and I was wondering if you can help us with the divorce papers. Okay, that's fine. I don't mind. Then I'll be looking forward to your visit. That weekend, Robert and I went to Umbriel's place and asked her help with the divorce papers. Thus, Robert and I became strangers to each other. Umbriel invited us to have dinner with her, but we refused for the reason of cleaning up our house and headed home. There were many things to do, so Robert and I split up to finish everything. Alexandra, is this a good time for you to talk? Yes, ma'am. It's been a while, isn't it? Why did you address me like that? What? Because Robert and I are divorced. You are not my mother-in-law anymore, right? We are strangers. That's true, but... Did I say something funny? No, you didn't. I wonder if you've been in touch with Robert. Why? Robert and I are divorced. I know that, but I can't get in touch with him. He hasn't sent me any money for this month. I didn't know about that. I'm no longer his wife. I'm really troubled. But you can cover your living costs with the tuition fees from the cooking class, right? We've had a few more students recently, but that's not enough. I'm having a hard time making ends meet. You've had more students? Congratulations on that. Then you must have a good amount of tuition fees coming in, don't you? Even so, it's just a modest amount of $1,000 a month. I was counting on Robert to pay me every month, but he hasn't contacted me. I know you're going through a lot, but I wish you the best of luck. Hey, Alexandra! 
Will you explain to me? It's been a while. What happened? It seems like Robert is staying at your place. What's going on? The two of you are divorced, aren't you? You're not married, are you? I just received a letter that mentions about cutting ties from Robert. What in the world is going on? Oh, are you talking about Robert? Yes, he's at my house. He's still here beside me. What do you mean? All my plans have messed up and I'm in big trouble now. What should I do? Are you talking about your plan to get Robert marrying the daughter of a wealthy family, wipe out your debts, and double your allowance each month? What? How do you know about that? I heard it from the wealthy family you mentioned, before me and Robert got divorced. Huh? What do you mean? Here's what I mean. The plan was to get a divorce once, then cut ties with you and remarry in the end. That's how it was going to be. By the way, Robert has changed his job and his address too. So there's no way you can find us. Oh no! You tricked me, didn't you? Anyway, the wealthy family you mentioned before was surprised. They told me that they were only joking about having their daughter marrying Robert. But it seems that you took it so seriously. I thought they were serious. For your information, the daughter of that wealthy family already has a boyfriend. You can't force her to break up with her boyfriend, can you? It's not too late. Just tell Robert to come home as soon as possible. If he doesn't do that, the family house will be taken away. Do you really have that much debts? How much money do you owe? Anyway, you still haven't given me the money you promised me when me and Robert got divorced. What are you talking about? I'm just kidding. But there's something else I need to tell you. What? When we talked about filing tax returns, I told you that $2,000 a year is tax-free. So what? You said the other day that you earn about $10,000 a year, right? Did you file your final tax return for that? I didn't. I thought so. I don't understand about what you're trying to tell me. If you haven't, I think that would be considered as tax evasion. Seriously? That's not good. Can't you do something about it? There's nothing we can do. That's why I said you should at least ask for advice from the professionals. I gave you good advice, you know that. Can you keep this as a secret? I'll do it properly next year. It's too late to do it properly next year. You told me that a member of a wealthy family must do his or her duty properly, didn't you? You're right. It would be a shame to get arrested. You're helping me, aren't you? Thank you. If you don't do your duty by yourself properly, you will dishonor the family. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Oh, no. As a good U.S. citizen, I think we have to fulfill our duties to pay the tax. That's what everyone else is doing. So I already reported about that to the authorities. Huh? How dare you? I'm sure you'll have some auditors entering your house soon for investigation. Please take care of that. You're kidding, right? Tell me that it's just a joke, Alexandra. I'm sorry, but it's true. I don't want that. My family will be dishonored. My mother-in-law's debt had reached seven figures after all, and with additional charges added to it, it was impossible for her to repay the debt. That's the result of not listening to the advice of others. I was so surprised that I couldn't keep my mouth shut. 
Instead of taking all the money, my mother-in-law's relatives confiscated the house. Umbriel herself had to repay the debt steadily while helping with various things at the relative's house. She should be grateful to be allowed to live in the relative's house anyway. It's too far for us to go and visit her since we need to take a flight. I heard that her cell phone was taken away too, so we may never see or hear from her again. Robert is working hard at his new job. He is getting along well with my parents, and he seems to have finally got his days back to normal. <laughs>